finally back in the UK, freezing cold, sunny. I've been away in France and Spain with Hutchinson Tyres shooting a movie over the last few days, but it's for a set of tyres that's under embargo, so you're gonna have to wait to see it. Just on the way to the studio now, Lawrence has been looking after it for the last few days, so I don't know what to expect. Today's video, I need some props. So in today's video, I wanted to bring your attention to what I think is the single best upgrade bang for buck that you can make to your bike. And that is changing your inner tubes. Now there are three main types of inner tube that I'm gonna be talking about today. They are Butyl, your normal inner tube material. Latex, bit weird, but super fast and Tubalito. Now I'm gonna run through these one by one and explain the benefits and the pitfalls of all three. But I wanna reiterate, this is one of the cheapest ways you can upgrade your bike and notice a real difference. This gap in the desk pisses me off so much. Butyl inner tubes. This is the most commonly found inner tube. Butyl is just a type of rubber. If you don't know what type of inner tubes you're riding, you're probably riding some of these. They look like this, cost around a fiver, and they weigh about 100 grams for a normal 700C tube. There is absolutely nothing wrong with riding an inner tube like this. They've been used for years, they're reliable, easy to repair, and easy to find repair kits. But they are the slowest of all the inner tubes that I'm talking about today. Next up is latex inner tubes. These are made of latex. Now there are a bunch of different brands making these and they vary in price and weight. The more you pay generally the lighter they'll be. Around 10 to 20 pounds for a decent brand and they weigh about 50 to 70 grams depending on which size you get. Now as bike upgrades go I think that's a fairly big weight saving based on the cost. I mean you can easily spend hundreds of pounds to try and save a few grams on a wheel set but the weight isn't the only benefit from riding a lighter tube like this. It's the feel you get from your bike. I think the difference in ride quality between butyl inner tubes and the lighter ones is almost as much as going from a clincher wheel to a tubular. It really is a big difference. Now there's a lot of discussion online about puncture resistance and inner tubes. I'm not going to comment on it too much in this video because I think in a lot of circumstances if you're going to get a puncher you're going to get a puncher regardless of the material your tubes are made out of. A piece of glass is going to go through whatever. One small downside of the latex tube is that it loses air a lot more quickly than a butyl tube. You really do have to pump up your tires just before you go riding. Leave your bike for a couple of days and your tires will have gone soft. Not a massive issue. Maybe if you were commuting or something, but I wouldn't recommend light inner tubes if you were commuting anyway. Now the last inner tube that I'm going to be talking about today is the Tubalito. No, it's not a new type of food. It's a super light inner tube. Now they do a bunch of different versions for road bikes. The normal one is 38 gram, which is a huge weight saving compared to a butyl tube. They actually make a spare version as well, which I believe you're supposed to carry in like an emergency or if you're bike packing and you really want as little weight as possible. And that's like 25 grams. So the lightest offering for sure. They don't come cheap. They're about 28 pounds RRP, although you can find all of these inner tubes online a little bit cheaper. So by far the most expensive of the three I'm talking about today. Although in the grand scheme of bike upgrades, I still think it's a fairly cheap one. Now they do make some big claims that they're more punch resistant than a butyl tube. I've ridden these and haven't had any problems, although the first time I used them, uh, I installed a very small O-ring, which used to come with the inner tube, in the wrong place. It's supposed to be on the outside. They don't seem to be supplying them with this anymore, so perhaps that was an issue and causing people to have punches in the past. They're made out of a really weird kind of orange plasticky bag sort of material. And if you want the long valve version, uh, they stick a valve extender on, which makes it a tiny bit heavier. In uh, terms of air loss, I'll put a graph in here. They did some testing so that you can see it compared to latex tubes and they apparently lose a lot less air. I found you have to make sure the core is tightened up enough because sometimes you'll lose air that way. Now, if you're interested in the performance of the tubes in terms of rolling resistance, my friends at Aero Coach actually did some testing on inner tubes. Here's what they found and I'll put a link down below so you can check it out properly. Top of the pile was latex tubes. They're the quickest in terms of rolling resistance, but obviously there's the extra weight you have to take into account as well. And then your old faithful butyl tube comes in last. Obviously there's tons of upgrades you can do to your bike, but I think this is one of the cheapest and most noticeable ways to improve the quality of your ride. It's also fairly cheap to experiment with, so give it a go. I'll put a link to a few different examples of inner tubes that I mentioned in today's video down below. Let me know if you've tried any of these and your experiences in the comments. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys tomorrow.